So now that the system's installed, we're going to look at the configuration stages of the installation and we're going to look at the update process. Yes lets you configure pretty much anything before you even boot into the system for the first time, so that's an advantage because it means you can optimally configure your computer before you first log in. So the first thing is you get to select a host name, in this case we'll call it computer, we'll leave the domain name blank and it will update that for us. It's now going to analyse your network configuration. Once it's analysed your hardware, you're going to get this selection. Now the first thing a lot of people will do is disable IPv6 if it slows their connection down. It says a reboot is needed, but it's going to reboot anyway after it's done the updates. Now by default, this uses if up, not Network Manager, but if you need Network Manager, you can enable it. You can either click here or you can click up here on this tab and it will take you to the, the configuration for all of these three things. If you click network interfaces, and click edit, it's going to let you do a wide range of things that you may need to do with your network connection before you can use it. A lot of people, if they're using normal Ethernet, they can just, they can just use the default, so usually work. Some people may have to change the MTU if they're not getting a connection to the servers or anything. And wireless, you could just click add and add your wireless interface to check the SSID and put in the passcode, that'll work. But if you really want to use Network Manager, click it now on this part, though you can't configure Network Manager until you've logged in for the first time. So once you're happy, click next. It's just going to write all the network configuration settings that you just chose. And it's going to start the firewall. After this it's going to check your connection and it will download the release notes as a test. Depending on your connection speed, this can take variable amounts of time. Right, if it says success, you can move on to updating. It's going to add the update open source and non-open source repositories now. This can take a little while, again depending on your connection speed, though this only happens once, so it auto refresh much faster. It's downloading the whole package, um, package repository information. Now it's adding the open source software repo and it's like adding the non open source software repo and the package descriptions. It's really quite fast for the amount of data that's in the repositories. It doesn't take much longer than any other package manager. App takes about this long to sync with the repositories the first time if you've got non-open source and things enabled. It's a pretty standard time sort of thing. It's now building a repository so you can browse it. It's going to give us a chance to run an update so we'll click next. In addition to installing updates, if we go to installation summary, these are all the updates it's marked by the way, with this little pointy up arrow thing. See here we've got these little ticks. This is pulling in packages that we might want in addition. As you can see Flash Player is there so we'll have Flash out the box. If we don't want it, click Taboo Never Install. Or click Don't Install if you plan to install it later. It's going to install the Microsoft font for us, and because I'm running it in VirtualBox, it's installing the guest tools. It does detect stuff that you may want. Of course, you can just untick it like I did there. No problem. 
Also, if you see that there's a lot to update here and you really don't need half of these packages, you can uninstall them now. For example, I chose not to use Network Manager. I know I won't need it, so I can just delete it now. I can do it for a lot of them. Also, if we click Keep and we scroll down, there's all the packages that are installed in the system. So if we want to remove OpenOffice now before we first log in, we can do it now. It's not a problem. We can do it for any packages that we want. I'll look at the package manager in more detail, but it's offering you this level of customization before you've even logged in. So not only do you have the choice to choose packages before the install, you have the choice to remove them after the install before you first log in still. I think this is brilliant, because if you've changed your mind or you don't want the particular packages you log in, you can remove it now. It's really, it's really good. You can also install stuff too. If we click do not install, I'm not going to because there's a huge list of software we can install. You can choose packages which aren't installed yet and install them now. It's up to you. Having this customization before first login is an absolutely brilliant thing to have though. Click patches, it's going to give you an overview of all the updates. As you can see there's all the information and what have you. We click accept. It's going to show us the auto install packages and updates. Click continue and it's going to do it. It doesn't take that long. If you've got a fast connection it shouldn't take that long either. It downloads Delta RPMs. Now what these are, these are the changed files from the original package that's installed. So instead of having to download the whole lot, it's going to download the parts that have changed it's going to rebuild the RPM. It doesn't take that long. As you can see, Delta RPM application process progress. It doesn't take that long at all. Most packages it takes seconds. As you can see there. It really doesn't slow down the update as a whole and also it downloads updates instead of download, 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 update, update, update. It does it like this. So it's pretty reliable. It's a really good way of doing it and these Delta RPMs really do bring down the file size. For example, as you know on other distros, if OpenOffice gets updated you have to download the whole 180 meg I think it is. The whole lot again. On OpenOffice you'll, you'll only download about 40 meg if not less because you're only downloading the parts of it that are changed, it rebuilds the RPMs, reinstalls it as the updated package. Doesn't use any extra space either. It's really good the way it does it. Anyway, I'm going to let the system update now and I'll come back to you once it's done.